Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. All right, and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast here on Blab. I'm your host, Peter Miliotis. On Twitter, it goes PD Beats. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions on the world of social media, sports, and pop culture. Uh, I'm really happy with the show we have tonight. It's all about sports broadcasting and social media. And uh, I'm really, uh, really happy to have, it was supposed to be three, but we have two uh, people who have been working in sports broadcasting and reporting for quite some time now. And I'm really excited for the conversations we're going to have. So we have sports director at CTV Ottawa, Terry Marcotte. Terry, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Peter. And we have TSN reporter who usually covers the Montreal Canadiens. We have John Liu from TSN. John Liu, welcome. Thank you, Peter. Pleasure being on. So this is, this is the, the time of the show where we give you the uh, the floor to just talk, tell us a little bit about yourselves, you know, opening remarks. So Terry, let's start with you. Um, I've been uh, reporting for a long time, 1981. I started out in the Maritimes as a news reporter, uh, worked a little bit of sports along the way, and uh, moved uh, primarily into sports in 1999 at uh, CTV Ottawa. And uh, I cover the Ottawa Senators. I cover lots of things, and uh, we do more than just hockey and football. Uh, we do a lot of stories of you know sports stories in the community and. Uh, um, it's a good job. I still enjoy it, and uh, yeah, it's fun. Great, John. What about you? Uh, well, I am uh, just being joined by my dog, who just came over and wants some attention. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and Peter, uh, you'd be very familiar with this breed here because I understand that your uh, your little Morky is uh, is an Instagram yes. superstar. <laughs> um, but anyhow, yeah, yeah. This is my Morky Mindy, and uh, yeah, she just came over uh, for a little bit of uh, yeah attention from Dad. So I think I'm gonna have to leave her there <laughs> for the time being. But um, uh, I'm I'm a Winnipeg, I'm a Winnipeg native uh, who's been transplanted transplanted in Eastern Canada. I've been with TSN since March of 2000. I uh, spent my first seven and a half years in the business uh, in uh, in Toronto. Uh, covering the Leafs, Raptors, Blue Jays, Argos, Ticats, whatever happened in and around the Toronto area on a professional basis, you name it. Um, oh, yeah, okay, so there's uh, there's yep. Leo. All right. Meet Leo, Leo. Mindy. Look at Mindy. <laughs> she doesn't understand the concept of, uh, of computer screens or television, so uh, I don't think, uh, yeah, she's not going to clue into that. But um, yeah, I got transferred to uh, to Montreal in uh, in in September 2007, and just as quickly she's got uh, September 2007, and have been here in Montreal, based in Montreal ever since. So, uh, as you mentioned, uh, oh, and Harry's bringing his uh, his hound over yeah. too. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> uh, this is yeah. I think your cat's bigger yeah, than both our so dogs. Much, yeah. <laughs> Leo, uh, he, he he said hi, but he was uh, he, he wanted to uh, to leave and go back upstairs. He was very comfortable. Yeah, he has actually a hockey, an NHL hockey puck pillow that I got I got for oh, Christmas, he? but he took it over like it's his now. So <laughs> dogs will do that. But yeah, no. Uh, but, thank you both for for coming on. And uh, John, no bow tie tonight, eh? No. Right now, it's uh, we're off hours, so no boat. <laughs> we were actually we had a couple of requests uh, that uh, I actually had a friend that I'm not going to say his name, but uh, he actually called you a fashion icon. You 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 uh, you you have uh, quite an influence in terms of uh, your style on a few of my friends. That uh... oh well, that's uh, that's flattering. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, um, yeah. So I just wanted to talk about you know social media. Uh, in terms of how you think it's affected, you know, sports broadcasting in a negative and positive way over the years, because we're seeing it's 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 one could argue it's dramatically changed about how 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 the landscape is these days. So, John, what do you think about you know with your job with covering the Montreal Canadiens? How has social media over the years have changed the way that you look at your job and sports broadcasting in general? Yeah, it's it's changed it immensely, Peter. And I'd say that the two. The two words that would describe it best would be immediacy and uh, connectivity. Uh, 
immediacy in terms of the fact that uh, when news comes out, uh, as soon as something's out of the mouth of a player, an athlete, uh, an athlete, a coach, a general manager, if you choose to do so, you can tweet it. It's right out there within seconds. Uh, granted, in a very short form, 140 characters, you have to learn to be very, very concise and very uh, succinct in what you're trying to convey. Um, but uh, in terms of the connectivity, uh, there's 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 interaction with um, there's interaction with your uh, with your Twitter followers with um, with well I mean the Twitter verse at large I mean because it isn't just necessarily your followers when you put something out there you attach that hashtag um, anybody looking in on that I mean you could be reaching hundreds of thousands of people if not more depending on what you're tweeting um, so it certainly uh, it for Terry and myself I mean our primary uh, medium is television, but uh, uh, having social media is one of the tools that we use to deliver content to uh, to viewers, to listeners, to followers. Uh, it really has changed the game, and it's uh, uh, it's put a different set of demands on what we do. But uh, and in some ways, it's a blessing and a curse. You know, I, I do like to some degree the interaction with followers. Uh, uh, although you do get random comments or insults or whatever that might show up in your uh, in your replies that uh, that uh, that's that are uninvited, unsolicited, but that just goes along with the territory. Um, but there is that that back and forth if you choose to engage with uh, with with individuals out there. That's uh, that's very different from from how we used to do business, which is okay. Well, here's our our stories that we deliver on television, Terry would deliver that um, as an anchor as well. And uh, so it's really sort of a one-sided conversation, but now there's uh, there's there's interaction that didn't exist where it previously, uh, that exists now that where it previously. Yeah, Terry, what do you think about that? What do you also think about this whole concept of, you know, using new media during like live broadcast and this whole concept of the second consu screen consumption, the sc like the second screen. So having your phone with you while you're watching a game on the big screen, what do you think about that? Um, you know, like I, and I, I hear what John's saying and I, and I, and I agree with everything you're saying, John, uh, the immediacy is, uh, I mean, it used to be that people would have to wait to hear what's going on, what the line combinations are, what, uh, you know, who's starting in nets, all of these things, they find out right away now. And, uh, I think that's one of the positives and it, it puts pressure on us to uh, to keep up, and I, I think I've been uh, I've been a little bit slow sometimes in responding to these kinds of things. So I, I'm 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 slow getting it. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, and, and as far as the interaction goes, I don't interact as much as I should, um, only because I'm I'm thinking of other things, and and I, I just find the day is only so long and. Uh, you know, you get so much on your plate and it, you know, you start to prioritize and, and it, you know, social media, it should be higher. I know it's important and I, I don't give it the attention that it should get. And uh, we all have our weaknesses and I guess that's one of mine. Mm -hmm. John, what, what do you think about the, cause, cause something that I've talked about with a lot of people is this whole concept that social media gets like kind of bundled up into like, new media, digital media, and all that. And it's not, a lot of people could argue it's not its own thing right now. A lot of people bunch it up with digital media marketing and website and all that. Do you think that there's going to be come a time where social media and sports is going to have a clear cut I, individual identity? Um, I'm sorry. I'm not exactly sure where you're going with that question, Peter, but if you're talking about, uh, um, the way that that sports broadcasting is delivered right now, in rel relative to social media, I think that they're permanently intertwined mm -hmm. yeah. at this point. There's, there's no there's no separating the two uh, because the genie's out of the bottle, um, and uh, the demands are there. Uh, as we're, we're, I mean, Twitter being one medium, it, I guess as far as as delivering information is concerned, it's the most uh, the most popular within our our industry. But um, I, I mean, when you take a look at some of the other forms that uh, uh, that do exist, they they're only going to become part and parcel of every 
of, of the way that we deliver sports broadcasting. Like for instance, I opened up an Instagram or excuse me, a, a Snapchat yes. account uh, just before the Winter Classic um, in in Foxborough. And uh, that was in conversation with uh, one of our senior producers. Uh, this is uh, just another form of communication that uh, that that we're we're looking at using to reach uh, different demographics, different segments of our of our our viewing population. Um, and uh, I have to admit, I, I I was flying blind and cold, uh, learning as I went with that Snapchat account, but. Uh, once I started to get sort of the basics uh, under my belt, it was uh, it was actually kind of um, uh, I found it rather enjoyable. It was almost like uh, creating little postcards. Yeah. Um, so there was a different feel to it compared to Twitter, uh, Instagram. I have an account as well, but I haven't uh, connected that to uh, to my um, uh, to my Twitter feed. And my Facebook account is a personal account. I try yeah, to keep that absolutely. separate from uh, from uh, from my work uh, purposes. But I mean, like just mentioning all those different media un unto themselves, that just gives you an idea of like, well, okay, this is just this is just the tip of the iceberg, right? Uh, I mean, this is all kind of exploded. If you want to re reference Twitter, um, I guess it's been uh, it's become particularly strong in about the last say five six years. So who knows what's around the corner? Um, there's other forms that I haven't tried that I know that are out there, like Periscope. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, yeah, I, I use I, I use Periscope hard. a lot. So what I do with Periscope is I did a thing tonight where I did like a pop alternative pre-show. So I just live mm -hmm. broadcast. So Terry, Terry, do you know do you know about Periscope at all? A lot of times I'm trying to use it. Yeah, I I've uh, I've been on it and I I I, I kind of hit and miss. I mean, I find a lot of uh, I I like I like to be a fly in the wall, and I I guess maybe <laughs> with Twitter. Um, I'm, I'm the same way. I like to read. I think it's a good source of information. You find out a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, for Periscope, I find the same thing. It, it's, it's kind of interesting to see what people put out there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of junk and there's some pretty entertaining stuff. Um, uh, it's also pretty new, right? So it's going to take a time for a lot of the junk content that you spoke about to kind of weed itself out right because it's it's a newer platform right john periscope is new yeah yeah and to be honest with you i'm not even going to yeah. talk about it because i don't know enough about it to to, to make any sort of an informed uh, conversation yeah going on. But, <laughs> you know what's funny about periscope though is like we both agree like periscope's it's not it's pretty new but i had a couple of months ago i had chris yandel on the podcast he's the assistant uh athletic director at georgia tech university uh, and uh, he was saying that there are people that early on with like Periscope being out for like only one month, they were like labeling themselves as not only social media experts, but Periscope experts. So how could one become an expert on something within like a month or two, you know, like it's so it's, it's, it, it was, it kind of perplexed me a little bit because I wasn't, I wasn't sure about, how someone can label themselves an expert on something that's been around for one month. The people who created Periscope were probably not experts right away. <laughs> that's the neat thing, though. I mean, how things evolve. And uh, um, again, as somebody who grew up uh, with typewriters and, and not knowing these things, I mean, I, I kind of sit back and you're almost afraid sometimes to put things yeah. out. Like even Twitter. I've been on Twitter. I got on it early and I still don't quite understand what I should be putting out there. I mean, that Craig Anderson starting in Nets tonight. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do it. Uh, that I do, do people care about my opinions about what's going on with the senators? If, if I, if I see something, I don't know. I, and I sometimes put it out. I sometimes don't. If you put it out, then you open yourself up to those conversations that John was talking about where people want to interact and say, you're an idiot. And I'm fine with that because a lot of times they're right. But um, I, 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 it, it, it is. It, everything's experimental in, in my mind. Yeah. But, John, uh, on, on your Twitter, I, I follow, I've followed you for a while. Uh, you're, you, you predominantly use Twitter for live tweeting reports about the Montreal Canadiens, whether it's live, like, right? That, that's basically, that, that's the wheelhouse in terms of how you use Twitter. Uh, well, primarily news, yeah, news delivery. delivery. Uh, I, yeah. I, I would say that uh, ninety-five to ninety-five percent or more of my of my tweets are strictly yeah. news-related. 
Um, occasionally, I'll tweet something about music, pop culture, or whatever that uh, that this kind of strikes my fancy. Something that wouldn't raise red flags uh, within company watchdogs, <laughs> because uh, I mean, our hard and fast social media uh, regulation is that don't tweet something that you wouldn't say in a broadcast. Or don't don't right? tweet something just, you wouldn't say to your grandma. That's what a couple of people have told, told me to. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, no, it's not that. It's not that loose uh, <laughs> as far as our, our, our company accounts are concerned. I mean, we have to be pretty discretionary about what we uh, about what we do tweet. And, and I mean, professionalism and common sense should be our governing uh, our, our governing stamp of viewpoint, yeah. right? Uh, but um, uh, Having said that, I think, you know, we all make mistakes and I'll be the first to admit that I've made mistakes on Twitter over I the know. years and uh, I've had to clean up my mistakes too. But uh, uh, it, it, it's, it, I do enjoy the, uh, the concept of Twitter uh, as, as, a, as a way to deliver and interact to some degree. I have colleagues who... Uh, they, they they carry on interactions with their followers uh, extremely uh, profoundly um, on a on a highly uh, regular basis, and uh, it's it's part of what they of their Twitter personality is. But I'm I like Terry in that respect is that I I don't want to go all that way simply because again there's so many hours in the day, and uh, uh, when you're focusing your energy on you know with your profession to some degree but also to your family to your uh to your hobbies other commitments and responsibilities it's like well you have to draw the line yeah. somewhere right but uh if somebody does ask me a legitimate question like an a, a, an informational based question i will and more often than not answer that within within reason i don't i don't address rumors because rumors are there's just no point in, in talking about or feeding rumors because that's why they're called rumors, right? Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, now Twitter. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's. Um, I'd say that that's probably about the uh, like the biggest tool that we use outside of the uh, outside of the medium that we're uh, our primary medium. And Terry's in my case, which would be television. I've, I've talked to you before, John. Uh, you were uh, I think covering the World Hockey Championships. Uh, and I was hosting on radio, and I almost equate uh, Twitter and what I would say on Twitter to what I might say on radio. It's not as formulated as our TV world, and you have a little more room for opinion and a little more room for dialogue, a lot more room, I guess, in radio, but uh, you still have to be careful. You can't go on and be a loose cannon and uh, mm -hmm. say Michelle Therrien should be fired and, uh, you know, that uh, you, you have to... You have to be respectful and, and realize that the next day you have to go and, and, and you're at the rink and I'm at the rink and you have to face people. So yeah, you have to, you have to, you have to be careful about what you say. And but, uh, but that, but that even was something even before social media was a part of your job, Terry and John, because look what happened at the live uh, at, during the Canucks Florida Panthers game a couple of days ago with uh, Dennis, Dennis Pape calling one of the Sedins a low life. I don't know if you heard about that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And it's like it's actually even worse in this day and age because that was used with traditional media, but then with the advent of social media, it blew up to like this massive thing. So it, it's it's become mm -hmm. dangerous for that as well because social media is always going to be on point. It's always going to be, you know, um, uh, it's 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 right there and it's it's waiting to you know, it, it's waiting to like pounce. I find especially when you have. When, when, when a lot of big accounts uh, get a hold of it as well. Like Bar Down on TSN, John, is really good at um, being very quick to cash the quirky, you know, non-traditional content. Sure, and that's why it exists, is because it's, it's recognition uh, uh, of, of what digital media is and what it means to people and yeah, how it connects sure. to people. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, yeah, it was, it, was form it was created specifically for that purpose. But you're absolutely right, is that you really have to, um, uh, on a professional capacity, you really have to have your filter on. And uh, you have to be very vigilant and mindful of, um, you know, what you, you, know, what you say, uh, how it can be interpreted and how it, 
how it might become something viral and you know created a, uh, a distraction or an embarrassment for yourself or your your company and the other thing too about twitter that and, and this is the drawback that i find to it of course and it, with only 140 characters there's no nuance there's no um, shade uh light and shade with uh with twitter you know it's like it's so it has to be so concise that people might not get the essence of what you're trying to say for instance uh today i made a tweet uh, about something that michelle terrian said that was particularly yeah. amusing um in his press availability and it was something to the fact that he was um he was uh kind of lamenting the fact that uh, uh that pro athletes when you mix youth and fame and uh uh and wealth recognition all these things after games guys are going to go and they're going to rip it up right they're going to enjoy themselves and go out on the town and he said that as far as his players are concerned that he wished that they would after the game go eat chocolate cookies and have a glass yeah. of milk and and we got a good laugh out of that in the press room um and he said well that's what i would like but that's not the reality but how do you say all of that and create uh you know, get, paint that picture in 140 yeah. characters, right? And so the replies that I had were a real mix. The vast majority were um, uh, people thinking that was that it was hilarious, and and really that's that's what the, the the essence of that of that moment conveyed. But there were people who were who were who were furious about that, thinking it's like, what are you joking about? You know, it's like, or you just don't joke about that. And I don't know if they meant that in the context of 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 all of this related to a domestic violence uh, incident. And, and so, and that's, and there, that's a perfect example of how Twitter doesn't tell the entire yeah. story, how it doesn't paint right the whole point. picture. And so it's open, yeah, so it's open to, to uh, layers of interpretation that's right or wrong will exist and, and wouldn't do so had it been the actual audio and video of Michelle Terrian speaking then people would have a much better idea of where that content and is. I'm sure you could talk about a lot about that too with the whole Montreal Canadiens, Ottawa Senators, a couple of years back in the playoffs with like Paul McLean and Brad Press issues going on. There was, there was a lot of that as well. <laughs> yeah, and but uh, and to John's point, the safe thing to do quite often, and and where I, I is I I don't tweet anything out because you're right. You 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 put something out there. And you're not giving the full context of what is being said because you're limited to uh, to 142 characters, and it, people will interpret it wrongly. And if someone is genuinely got a good funny line, or just not not even bringing a little light to a, a serious situation, but just almost a reality check, telling us that you know they're young kids and they make a lot of money and they're going to go out and sometimes they're going to do things that. You know, ten years down the road, they might regret and look back and say, "What was I thinking?" Um, but that doesn't come across when you've got uh, when you've got you're so limited in what you can say. And I, I just, uh, you know, I, I, that's where I, I, I will say, "Well, you know what? I'm not going to tweet anything." Yeah, no, it's it, it's, but it's it is day by day. It's and that's why I started Pop Turnative because there's a lot of you know cross promotions and a lot of, you know, um, intersections between social media and sports. It's, it's unbelievable. There are websites like Bleacher Report and Deadspin that are, you know, focused like on like tweeting, uh, tweeting out and posting the content like bar down that in that would not traditionally get a lot of attention, you know, on, you know, TSN or on, on CDB news. But it's it's becoming. It, I think that they're embedded together, and I think that it's going to always be like that. It's always going to be the, the intertwined. But what I think is, it and Terry, this is a question for you: Do, Is are there situations where you're prepping? You know, your your uh, and I think I, I've helped you a few times too, where I've kind of you know sent you yeah. some some links, some YouTube links to some cool stuff. Um, like uh, John, I don't know if you saw, but like. I think it was last year. There was a really cool uh, Hawking Kenya video that Hawking Torio put out. It was a cool video showing that there was a little ice rink, uh, um, hockey arena in a hotel in Kenya 
that a couple of players were just playing ice hockey. And, you know, stuff like that, I, I'll just toss uh, t- uh, to t- Terry's way because before he goes into – before he and, I'll there, and I'll use it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And it's, it's – and that's what it is. A lot of people are always, like, bar down. There's a bunch of guys down there that I know personally that that's what they do. They're searching, searching for stuff and creating content schedules. But it, it has – Terry, is it – do you think that – it's more and more becoming like an essential part to how you make your news spot every night. Like, is it, is it, or do you still think that, you know, it's not as important as people allude it to be? Well, I, I like, I, I mean, it, I, I think I'm a good one to answer and a bad one to answer and something like that. And today is a good example. So I've got a wonderful story in uh, Cornwall, um, a, 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 a young 16 uh, year old teenager, with autism who is playing on his high school basketball team a minute to go in the game and his coach puts him in and one of the players on the other time realizing the situation gives him the ball and everybody clears way and he goes out and he takes a shot he misses takes a second shot makes the basket it's what sports is about it's a beautiful story and i spent the day um in cornwall putting that together and you come back late my focus at that time is is not on geez i better tweak something out and it should have been it should have been part of what i did but i was so focused on how are the elements going to come together and i didn't uh i didn't tweet it out to promote it and i should have Uh, but my priority was doing a good job with the story and uh and that's probably what I would have done 20 years ago and it's what I did today. And is it right? No, it's not right. But, uh, but you know, I, I, I still look at it that primarily I'm a TV guy and uh, whatever I can do on social media is gravy. And I, I know that's changing. I know I got to be better at it. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to be on this just to, uh, you know, kind of to try to learn something. I mean, well, we're, 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 yeah, well, we're happy to have you. We're really, uh, Really have to have you on, but John, another thing too. Okay, so let's 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 let, let me create the scenario. Your your like uh, your scenario probably when you go to a game, right? When you go to Montreal Canadiens game, end of the game, like the three stars, they're done. You go to the media scrum area. You're gonna get your stories. Probably like, what do you think the percentage is? I am I right with the eighty five percent? of the people that you see with their phones, all the reporters, they're either one prepping their, you know, phone to do the recording, or most people are probably on Twitter, right? Is that a fair assessment to say? Like if you see phones, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think there's, I, I don't know for certain, but I, I find it hard to believe that anybody that's uh, in the dressing room after the game that has a tape recorder, uh, a microphone, a camera, any sort of recording device, I find it hard to believe that anybody in that room does not have a Twitter Or was not using it at that at moment as well, because I went to right. Subway Series in Gatineau a couple of years ago, because I do work with the Connect Marriage Junior Hockey League. We had Bob McKenzie there, and uh, he was uh, right at the end during like, the media scrum, was just on, and you know, Bob, what, what a fantastic accomplishment. Bob McKenzie reached a million Twitter followers. Um, and, and it's, it's, it's yeah. crazy to think that uh, he would uh, reach that many. And he, he does a really good job. And he was on Twitter the whole time, just checking out everything and, you know, using it kind of as his main source rather than a couple of years back where someone's maybe texting another reporter or their boss saying, hey, you know, what's the news, right? You could just go on Twitter and find that out. Yeah, um, and I mean Bob is a is a fantastic example of somebody who uh, who was uh, a yeah. print guy at the start of his career and has just uh, adapted and evolved as the years yeah. have gone by to the point where, like you said, that he is uh, hands down the most trusted and connected source in yeah. the hockey world. And uh, so, I mean, he's built his reputation up through decades and uh, has uh, has used Twitter um, as a, mm-hmm. as a tool. To, uh, to to leverage his his uh, his yeah. stature within the hockey community, and so I mean he's probably a best case example of somebody who has uh, embraced the new media in such a way that uh, that that basically he's the go to guy. You know, it's like any any hockey player, uh, whether he's Canadian, American, Swedish, Finnish, 
any hockey player with a Twitter account, you got to believe that Bob McKenzie is one of his. Oh, followers, absolutely. Right? And, uh, and it's like, you know, if you yeah. start a new Twitter account, you're looking to follow hockey people, you follow NHL, you follow some teams, he'll be there like right away. You know what I mean? Like with like suggested follows. Yeah. And uh, very quickly, too, uh, um, we, another person that I think does a really good job from TSN uh, that I've had on the show a couple of. Uh, 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 around the American Thanksgiving, we had Craig Button on the show, and Craig Button is really good on social media in terms of interacting, replying to all his followers, which yeah. I think is very important too, right, Terry? Like being that interaction that that people crave is very important. Yeah, I I, I agree. Like it's it's like any conversation. I mean, if somebody calls me, I'll call them back, or if somebody sends oh, me an email, a- I'll respond. And, and social media is the same thing. And I I find oh, it yeah, important. But but uh, I guess you know the you know the reality sometimes is is you know we've been we've been cut back uh, like a lot of traditional broadcasters so you're 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 doing more with less and I'm not complaining but I mean radio is is, is part of what I do every day now and uh, and you know you still have your responsibilities for television and now you've got uh, social media to deal with it's difficult sometimes to to balance everything. And if you're taking time away from one, you're 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 going to something else is going to uh, be compromised, and uh, it's striking that balance in a day. And if you get too caught up with uh, with with chatting with people on on social media, I mean, it 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 uh, it does become, I think, a distraction. I hate to say it, but it does. Well, no, I, I, absolutely, John. What do you think about that? About as a distraction? Uh, personal distraction, yeah, yeah, it certainly can be if you allow it to be, and that's the thing. Was like, and as Terry has talked about it, and I did too, is that uh, you know you have to draw the line. Um, that uh, you set uh, rules for yourself about uh, how much interaction you're going to engage in and how much you you're going to allow. And you have to have some personal guidelines and sets of rules. Otherwise, it ends up governing your life. And you know, frankly, I mean, I don't want to preach about this, but to me, there's nothing more important in your personal life than your family, right? So I mean, social media shouldn't be taken away from uh, you know your your priorities. I mean, not to say that uh, our our careers are not priorities because that helps you uh, uh, you know uh, provide uh, the lives that you do for your families. But uh, no, I mean, I certainly will not sacrifice uh, certain uh, it, it priorities or elements in my personal life at the expense of uh, social media. Yeah, I, I, I find it I find it tough, too. I mean, when you're watching a hockey game, and I and I know a lot of people do that, and they're tweeting out uh, almost play-by-play and, uh, and putting it in. Yeah. I, 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 I can't get into that at all. If I'm watching a hockey game, I like to watch a hockey game. And yeah. I'll tweet out if uh, Bobby Ryan leaves the ice with an injury, I'll do that. But I just don't get – um, engaging uh, when you're watching uh, a sporting event. I, l- I watch sporting events. I mean, it's it's what I do, but I like to watch sporting events. And I, you know, go still go over to Gatineau in the '67 game. I just like watching, and uh, yeah. and you know that's why I'm doing this because I grew up as a sports fan, and uh, and I still like to enjoy a hockey game or a baseball game or football game as a as a fan, just not cheering, but just enjoying yeah. what's going on and. That's kind of, uh, you know, what John's talking about family. For me, I, I would put the same in, in, uh, in sporting events. If I'm there on my own dime, I'm not interested in, uh, in engaging. I want to go there and just use it as downtime. Yeah. Or, yeah. And the, the, the other thing, too, is that uh, I, I don't live tweet because um, the majority of my followers, I don't have a breakdown of the statistics, but the majority of my followers, I have to believe, are Montreal Canadiens yes, fans. Mm-hmm. And so if I'm at a game, why would I live tweet when the majority of my followers are watching that well, game but is somewhere? That- Whether on their phones or their televisions or listening to it on the radio, I don't believe that I'm adding value to their their experience by live tweeting. And that's the primary reason why I don't. I don't take part Absolutely. in that Absolutely. I, I, I think, too, Terry, the whole live tweeting thing, I think, is also for people who don't have access to, like, the game, right? They don't, they, they, they don't, you know, they're not watching it. They're at work, you know. that I think they're not able to stream it. I think that's kind of 
that was the origins of live tweeting sporting events. Okay, all right. But but I also think too that it was created. Like some people some people do it. Some people will yeah. sit and watch a game, and you know people that I uh, you know that uh, I work with, I respect. Uh, you, you know, you're they're going to be tweeting out uh, like all through a game, and I I wonder like. You know, but they put in, but it's the, it's different when they put in their own insight and comments, though, rather than Thomas Plekanec score, uh, scores assisted by you know. But then Alex once you Howard. start putting, once you start putting in your comments, like if I'm starting to put my comments into tweets, number one, I mean, uh, it, like I, I think that you're in dangerous ground as someone who covers. You're 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 saying I'm smarter than the coach or the players, and I'm not. Yeah, and, uh, and I, I, I just think it, it's, it's a it's somewhere I don't want to go. I, I think it's just. Uh... Uh, yeah, and there's there, there's a there, there's a problem with that, and someone I really want to have on the show one day because he has really strong opinions about social media and fans using social media interacting. John, it's uh, Jeff O'Neill from TSN. Oh, okay. I want the O Dog on the show. O-Dog, I want him on the show yeah. because. I I I'm a, I I grew up a Habs fan, but once in a while I'll put I'll have loose lunch on in the background, and some of the stuff that they talk about really interests me, and it's and it's the stuff that's not about the Leafs, but just in general because they do go on about a lot of different things, and one of the things that Jeff O'Neill said is a lot of people were, and he said antagonizing and criticizing him on social media, and he was like, I just want to know where these people get off. Thinking that, and he's like, I'm not saying that they're 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 not like super knowledgeable, but there's kind of like an entitlement with some people on social media, and I think the opportunity, Terry and John, that you know, social media creates for people to get their name out there, create a blog, could be a bad thing. This, well, not a bad thing, but could have some not so positive connotations towards it as well. Well, um, you know what? That's a very good point. And I'll go back to something you said earlier on about uh, Periscope experts. I mean, you know what? The Internet is the Wild West. It's unregulated. There's no laws. There are no boundaries, no filters. And so anybody with a computer can call him or herself anything. And uh, so, I mean, and I'm not trying to denigrate any any bloggers out there. Because there are some very good bloggers, some outstanding bloggers. But the fact is, is that for consumers, for viewers, readers, listeners, um, you have to be discerning about where you get your information, yeah. right? Whether it's through mainstream media outlets or trusted blog sources. Uh, and again, that's why that's why I don't address rumors because there's hundreds and hundreds of rumor websites and blogs out there that have no basis in what they're reporting. Right. And so, I mean, you really have to be careful about what you're consuming and where you're coming from. It's like one of the number one rules yeah. that we were taught in journalism school is consider the I mean, source. Ter- right? yeah. And that applies for I mean, consumers. Isn't it? Terry, Bonks Mullet, right? Bonks Mullet. Is, yeah. Uh, Bonks Mullet. John, Habs on the pro- Habs Eye on the Prize, Rabbit Habs. These are, you know, yeah. these are. The, the, and the, I don't have Ducks have one that's a good friend of mine, Ducks and Pucks. These are blogs that have no affiliation whatsoever with like with the NHL club. And they're, they're you know, situations where they act like they are they are affiliated with, with, with the team, that they do have this power. And they have created a really good following and more power to them. And, and like, I, I'm, I applaud them. It's awesome. But it's like there's so much opportunity out there. Do you think that, you know, maybe it could become a head game where these bloggers believe that they're on par with people like you you guys that have been working in this industry for, you know, a couple, like a decade? See, I I find, like, I I sometimes wonder, like, what sets me apart from the average fan? And it it, it might be access. Uh, We get access to the, the team that uh, a lot of people don't get. And uh, what does that give you? I mean, it gives you a 15 to 20 minute snapshot of players and you get a chance to go up when they're um, sitting at their, you know, in the dressing room and you get to talk to them about other things. And uh, you get you get a snapshot, you get a true picture of players. Of course not. You don't get a true picture, but I think what, what, you know, if, if, I think I'm good at filtering out information. You get so much yeah. information thrown at you. 
And I think that's what social media does. It just throws everything out there. And you could spend hours and hours going through and reading about the Montreal Canadiens or the Ottawa Senators. And I think what I try to do, both in, in, in uh, digesting what's out there and putting out what's out there, I try to filter and just concentrate on what's important. And sometimes I miss things because I'm not searching every site. But uh, I don't think too often that I, you know, go to bed and think, wow, how did I miss that? Because yeah. if it's important, you find out. No, absolutely. Well, John, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, sure. Um, what Terry's talking about is, is uh, we are in the news yes. business, okay? We're not going to report something that is rumor, innuendo, that is un, uh, that is um, that is unconfirmed, yep. okay? Um, and I'm not saying that people, I'm not telling people what they should or shouldn't read or listen to. All I'm saying is that consider the source and just understand what it is exactly that, uh, uh, that you want to consume and from what sources, yep. right? Um, if you want your news, okay, here are some sources. If you want rumors, if you want to read up on rumors, fine, okay, go to those particular sources. Um, one of uh, a couple of the uh, Canadians blog sites that I particularly like have writers who uh, their niche uh, is analytics, yeah. right? Because that is such a that's such a uh, a, a, a new and emerging um, element to um, to hockey analysis that. Uh, I enjoy reading what these individuals break down with respect to certain players or uh, certain teams, how analytics shape and how they uh, how they translate into their games in particular. So you have those particular sources that can satisfy that niche as well. Um, there's such a wealth of uh, uh, of news and information that uh, it's like it's really up to the consumer. It's it's. Hey, you know what? It's it's a smorgasbord, but you know you just have to. Uh, hey, just just be uh, just understand what it is that you're uh, what you're consuming and where it's coming from. That's all I'm oh, saying. Absolutely, I think we 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 all bring we all brought up some really good points, and I think we're gonna wrap up this episode tonight. I uh, I thank you both for coming. Uh, you guys are you guys are pros. Like you guys have been around doing this for a long time. I'm so like honored to be able to talk to you guys on my show. Like it really means a lot. So thank you very much uh, for coming on. Oh, it's a pleasure that, uh, to be on the show, Peter. And thanks for yeah. Thank you, Peter. It uh, yeah. It's uh, it's uh, good to be here. Perfect. Now, John, I, I have a I have a question for you, John. Um, so we didn't we didn't get the bow tie, but I, I want right. I want to know if we could have a we can have a a original classic John Lou sign off, but a little different, a little <laughs> different than usual. So John Lou, TSN Montreal, but how about John Lou, TSN Pop Turnitin? So can we, can we, can we, can we, can sure. we get one of those? And I'll give you, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up and then I'll give you a, a point and then you can, you can say it. So that, can we, can we do that? That'd be amazing. Sure. I, I don't know what that's it a, is thing. a thing. It's I great. get that comment on Twitter and yeah, it's, it's, it's great. <laughs> so I, I want to thank everyone for coming on the show. It was a uh, really, really uh, cool conversations. Uh, uh, thank you, Terry. Thank you, John. We'll be back next week with a hockey panel with uh, Matthew Barnaby and uh, Connor McKenna from uh, TSN will, will also be on as well. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And uh, you can follow us on uh, Twitter at Popternative. You can like us on Facebook, and you can watch. We uploaded all the episodes on SoundCloud. So, um, if you just wanna, if you don't wanna just watch YouTube the video, we also have the uh, SoundCloud audio only. So you can check that out. Thank you all. Have a great night, and John Liu, TSN Popternative. Yes. Perfect. Have a good night, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.